الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected ulama ikram, brothers and elders, a very warm welcome to those that are present here tonight and those that are listening in via the audio streaming. <clears throat> no doubt any gathering in which uh, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking place, uh, the remembrance of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the teachings of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being shared, is indeed a very virtuous and a noble gathering. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that he, say, uh, he says that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yak'udu qawmun yathkuroon Allah azza wa jal illa haffathum al-malaika wa ghashiyathum al-rahma wa nazalat, wa nazalat hum al-sakina wa dhakarahum Allah fi man inda. That he says that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No people will sit down remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the angels, the, uh, the malaika to surround them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend on those people. And sakina, peace and tranquility will descend on those people. Now that does not mean that we will fall asleep, but now there will be a bit of peace and comfort here as well. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed remember them in a better place, in a more noble gathering. So as we sit here for the program, let us renew, let us refresh, and let us cement that intention deep in our hearts that we have come here so that we may learn, so that the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may increase in our hearts, so that the love of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can increase in our hearts, and that we may learn from the deen or learn of the deen of Nabi, of, 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 that we may learn of the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Firstly, on uh, the first, the first program, at, or rather, the first item on the agenda tonight is that we will ask Qari Umar Bashir to recite a short qiraat for us, or to recite a qiraat for us, and thereafter we will continue.
MashaAllah, what a beautiful recitation. And the Quran is such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Wahada Kitabun Anzalna Mubarak, that this Quran is Mubarak. It is full of blessings. And any way that a person attaches himself to the Quran, his life will also be filled with blessings. Whether that person is reciting the Quran, whether that person is listening to the Quran, whether that person is practicing on the Quran in every way that you attach yourself to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fill your life with blessings. Now, our guest speaker tonight, Muhammad Hublus, has traveled from very far. He was recently in our country, and the programs were well received. He will be here for a few days again, and speaking in different places. These programs will be broadcast on Radio Islam International. We do broadcast on three platforms. That is Medium Wave 1548, Free to Air Satellite, as well as our audio streaming. It is a radio station that has started about 20 years ago. And uh, with the object, with the purpose of you know, granting the Muslims a voice and granting them an alternative to the mainstream. 
We cover stories that maybe will be overlooked at mainstream, and that is our focus that to teach people, to inspire people, to motivate people to do better. So with your assist assistance and your du'as, the radio station has grown from strength to strength, and we hope uh, that it continues in that way. But uh, enough about that. Uh, we'd like to welcome and we'd like to call our speaker for this evening, Muhammad Hublus, to the front. I prepared a very long introduction, but I don't want any janazas to leave here tonight. So uh, with, uh, without further ado, we'll hand over the mic to Muhammad Hublus. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Subhanallah. Um, so, inshallah, maybe before I start, uh, we'll do the formalities, inshallah. In the hadith, the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he who does not thank the people, he does not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with this, uh, I would like to extend a warm heart and a big thank you to my uncle Yaqub Mahtar and his family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless whom has brought me out uh, for the second time. Never have I been to a country and come back within six months. But when uncle Yaqub calls, he somehow, he has, he has a way with words, man. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and bless his family. Subhanallah. I remember the first time he called me, he said, Sheikh, we'd like you to come to South Africa. I said, who's inviting me? Every country I ever go to, I always ask, who's inviting? And usually the answer is, you know, this organization, that organization. He said, the people of South Africa are inviting me. So this struck a chord. And I would also like to thank the uh, Adamji family. Sheikh Ibrahim, I have not seen. Is he around? His sons I've seen. Ah, he's gone for Umrah, mashallah. <laughs> so his sons, Adil and Sheikh Munir, thank you for the hospitality and wallahi, yani, very, very, very big ikram. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless one and all and give you all for those al-a'la, inshallah. Um, does anyone remember what I spoke about the last time I was here? Anyone? That was in Ferrer or Rocher? No, but yeah. Oh, sorry, that, that, the, the masjid. The, the, so I remember Ferrer or Rocher. So. Does anyone remember what I spoke about when I was in this masjid? Okay, good. What's, what's that, sorry, Sheikh? He said we give rubbish time to Allah. Ah, yes. Give rubbish to Allah. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, it's very important that whenever we come to a khutbah, we come to a bayan, that we come with open hearts. Unfortunately, my brothers, especially for the younger ones, our deen is starting to imitate the entertainment industry where we no longer come really to be enlightened rather we come to be seen we come because there's a big event we come maybe because there's a big speaker maybe there's a big maulana coming maybe we come to be seen and even those who are maybe not here to be seen we come to see today we come to watch speakers not listen we don't listen anymore. We come, we sit in the bayan, we sit in the Friday khutbah, and instead of sitting down with the adab, you see my brothers, at the end of the day, when you're listening, you're not listening to a human being. What you're doing is you're showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adab, and you are trying to learn. Wallah, if you ever come, try this once in your life, go to Allah with a sincere open heart, you will learn things that even ulama cannot teach you. Ulama cannot teach you. Have you ever in your life, ever in your life, seen an ant 
get caught out by the rain? Have you ever in your life, ever, who taught it? What madrasa? If you come sincerely, wallahi, genuinely, you come from your heart. You come to listen and to learn and you come with the quality in front of Allah that Ya Allah, I'm the one that is most in need. You will learn things even the khatib did not intend on teaching you. But we don't do this. We come with it really most of the times you sit down, especially, especially sometimes you might have an artistic speaker. He's really good. Maybe he's catchy. Maybe he's, you know, he's lighthearted. He throws in a few light jokes here and there. So, most of the times we either sit with the intention of the entertainment of it, or even worse, subhanAllah, great bayan. I wish my wife was here. He spoke about all of her bad qualities, man. I wish my uncle was here, man. Everything I've been giving, I wish he was here. Almost as if, almost, of course, we never say this on our tongues, my brothers, but actions speak far louder than words. Almost as if that I'm destined for Firdaus al-A'la and the rest of humanity is down eating from the tree. Zakum and Jahannam wa bi'is al-Masir. Of course, we don't say this on our tongues, but in our actions. I wish Fulan was here. I wish Fulan was here to hear the talk. Habibi, let me tell you, if you really believe in the Allah that you claim that you believe in, then Allah would have ordered this individual to be here and listen. But the fact that that person is not here is divine destiny from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But more importantly, the fact that you're here is what's more important. So please, my brothers, wallahi, we come with an open heart. And we listen with the adab and the akhlaq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I'm the one that is most in need. Two people never learn. Two people never learn. You know who they are? The arrogant and the shy. They never learn. Shy, he's too, uh, too shy to ask. He'll live all his life never asking the questions he needs answers for because he's too shy. Ulama say these two people, they never learn. The one that's too shy, uh, I never had the heart to speak. I never had the heart to put my hand up. And who's the other one? The arrogant. I already know. I already know. Two people that will never learn. My brothers, look, my time is short, so let me get straight into it. When it comes to worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's two aspects. Two, two aspects. There's the ibadat of the limbs, the worship of Allah through the limbs. That alhamdulillah, mashallah, this ummah is flying in. We are very good when it comes to this side of ibadah. Two, the ibadat of the limbs that we all speak about, we all show, we all present. But the more important one, the one we all lack in, trust me, we all lack in, is the ibadah of the heart. Salah, namaz, we pray. Beads, mashallah, look at them, they're here, they're shiny, I just oiled it. Thobes and, and, and you know, abayat, from Medina, hand tailored, made, not a crease in it, it's iron pressed, whatever you like. Atar, uh, it, it comes from a special animal from the this and the that and the bad. Habibi, all that you, all the ibadat of the limbs, they're there. When it comes to my charity, uh, this is from my family, the son of so and so, mashallah, their contribution is this much. Allah! But the ibadat of here. The ibadat of this, my brothers. What are the fruits? What is the purpose? What is intended from behind all of our acts of worship? What is intended? Why does anyone, why does the farmer plant the seed into the ground? Why does he plant a fruit tree? Why does he irrigate the land and watch it and, you know, and nursery and, and, and feed it? And wallah, everything he has to do and he'll watch this tree grow and he'll trim it. And why? What's the purpose? Because he is in love with the tree? No, because his intention behind all of this hard effort that eventually this tree will bear me fruits. But we've been praying and fasting and giving our zakat for years. What fruits are we supposed to bear? Manners and akhlaq. 
soft hearts. Are they present, my brothers? Are they present? Let's explore. You see, my brothers, let's start with fundamentals. You and I all have to come to understand that in this world, nothing happens without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you with me? Decree, it is a part of Iman. Any person that denies the divine destiny, the decree of Allah, if you deny the decree of Allah, this takes you out of the fold of Islam. In the famous hadith, I don't have time for it, in the famous hadith, when Umar ibn al-Khattab, he narrates, he says, we were sitting in the masjid, sitting with the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and a man walked in, his clothes were whiter, I'm sure you've heard the hadith, his clothes were whiter than white, his hair was blacker than black, he looked like a stranger, but yet didn't look like a traveler. He walks into the masjid, walks straight up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with complete disregard to everyone else in the masjid. He says he walked straight to Rasulullah, he sat down, he put his knee to his knee, and then he placed his hands on the blessed thighs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says to him, Ya Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. And then he tells him the five pillars of Islam. And then he tells him, Ya Muhammad, tell me about Iman. And then when he, sallallahu alayhi wa he mentions the six pillars of Iman, he says one of them is to believe in what? In the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be it good or bad. That what happened to you, what hit you, was never going to miss you. And what missed you, was never going to hit you. And if you believe anything else, then let this person take his place in Jahannam. Anything and everything that happens to you, my brother, understand. It wasn't written on that day. It wasn't written on the day you were born. It was written and destined by Allah 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. The human being in his design, in his construction, and I hope, I hope, our sisters listening to this, I really hope the women open up their hearts tonight and really listen for once in your lives with an open heart. It is in the design of the human being, in the design, that we are selfish people. Of course, we never say this on our tongues, but Allah says in the Quran, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانَ ضَعِيفَ The human being is weak by design. We are fearful, my brothers, we are weak people, trust me. We can act tough all we want, but by design, we're weak. We're afraid. We're selfish. We're ignorant. We're arrogant. By design, arrogant. We're misers. By design. People ask, why do I need deen? This is why. To purify the human being from such sicknesses. And by design, Allah has put in the mix of the human being, Allah has put some unbelievable, yeah, and some amazing contradicting things. I'll give you an example. The human being by design loves to be alone to some degree. Sometimes you want your peace and quiet, yes? You with me? By design, we love to be alone, but not too much. Anyone that's been alone for too long, what's the joke? The man's gone cuckoo, bro. He's been alone for too long. So, by design, we're also very social creatures. We need human beings around us. But also, not too much. My brothers and sisters, we living in this world, we are on a collision course that has been designed by Allah. Whether you like it or not, by design, we have to interact. We will collide, we will hit into each other, we, we have to interact whether you like it or not. Designed by who? By the king, the Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. And amazingly so, every single person in this world has that one person in their lives that drives them up the wall. By design, 
And usually the person is family. Are you with me? Every single one of us has that one individual that makes you question, Ya Allah, why? Just tell me why. I have ten brothers. All of us are turning right. And the last brother that came, surely he must be adopted. He must be adopted. He's the only one that's turning left. I have four sisters. Three of them I get along with like a house on fire. One of them I am sure is the apprentice of Pharaoh himself. And you know what's amazing, my brothers and sisters, by design? Every one of us, we always like to isolate ourselves from the rest of humanity. That look, what I'm going through, no one else is going through. Have you noticed? <laughs> Sheikh, trust me. The musiba I'm in, no one else is going through. I'm thinking, what a miskin. Wake up, Habibi, wake up. And unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, we have become so limited. Deen has become so scarce. The sunnah of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa has become so absent in our lives that we no longer see Allah, we see the individual. By design, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing you can do about it. Did you think Allah created you in this world so you can live a happy life? Is that what you thought? Did Allah not say, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا your life in this world is a test, my brother and my sisters. This place, please, for the love of Allah, for the love of Allah, understand and memorize. Wallah, if you have to tattoo, tattoo is haram. But if you have to for the greater good, get it on your arm. This place is not Jannah. It's not Jannah. Stop trying to make this filth your Jannah. Al-dunya, jannat al-kafir. Al-dunya, sijn al-mu'min wa jannat al-kafir. But the truth is, the words of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they belong to the books, bro. They belong to people with white beads. We don't follow the sunnah of Rasulullah. We follow the sunnah of Michael. Al-dunya sijn al-mu'min wa jannatu al-kafir. Sijn al-mu'min wa jannatu al-kafir. But we insist, wallahi, we insist on making this place our jannah and we're failing and we're failing miserably. Every one of us has this one individual in their lives, my brothers. Every one of us has that one relative. And it's unique, subhanAllah. No one gets under your skin like the way this person does. Have you noticed? Do you think this is coincidence, my brothers? As a Muslim, do you believe in coincidence? Who put this person in your life? Who? And more importantly, why? When are we going to stop seeing the individual and start seeing Allah from behind this person? Ah, it is Allah that placed this person in my life. The two sons of Adam, alayhi salam, the two sons of Adam. You know, the problem is, is we all like to think that, that I'm God's gift to humanity. And everyone is against me, brother. Subhanallah, I don't do anything to anyone. Subhanallah, I don't know why. Have you heard sisters when they complain? Ya Allah. Everything is over-dramatized. And I swear to God, Wallah, yeah, I didn't speak to anyone. And, I, and you know, I went and I said that and I didn't speak to anyone. And all of a sudden, they were all attacking me. And Ya yeah, Habibi, please wake up to yourself. Who do you think you are? By design. Who put this person in your life? Who? The two sons of Adam alayhi salam, two sons, both fell in love with the same sister. Sons of a prophet, don't tell me there was fitna, Habibi, there was maybe 10 people on all of earth. Their father was a Nabi. 
but they fell in love with the same. Both proposed, she accepted one and not the other. Something entered the heart. Drove him crazy to the point where he ended up killing his brother. The first murder that ever took place on earth were the sons of Adam over a woman. These, these things are there, my brothers. These things are there. They're real. Who put this person in my life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unfortunately, my brothers, we stop reading the test. Everything that happens to you is a test. Every individual in your life is a test. Start reading the test. Stop looking at the individual and start seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is this person in my life? Why is this happening to me? Understand it's from Allah. Nothing and no one else. And if you try to avoid the test, like many of us do. Brother, listen, I don't care. Let him be there and me be here and inshallah, all of our problems are solved. You ignorant person. This is not how you solve your problems. This is in fact how your problems get worse. I'll give you an example. You remember when you were young and you did something wrong and dad found out and it was one of those wrongs where you, you had to cop one. Ya Allah. What was the weapon of choice in your country? Was it a stick or a shoe? What, what? Shoe? A belt. For us it was a stick. If you're Lebanese it was a stick. So as a kid, you know you've done wrong. And you feel worse about the fact your father found out more than the fact that you actually did the wrong. Look how, look how arrogant we are. Halas, now the father has found out, maybe mum told him the dilemma. Now he's coming your way, now you know. Now as a child you're making executive decisions, what do I do? Now you knew, look if I just stand there, I cop a whack, very high chance it's going to be over with one hit. True. But if you were like me as a young kid, that one whack was too much. So what did I usually do? I opted to what? To run. Now that the fact there's running involved, your father has to run too. No father wants to run, bro. So when the father has to run, what was supposed to be one whack has now become what? Ten minimum off the bat. That's for effort. That's because you made me run. And if for whatever reason his choice of weapon was damaged during the abuse, my mom used to use the wooden spoon. So she would run to the kitchen, grab the wooden spoon. So I would always try to calculate and put my elbow so she can get it on the... And twice, I remember twice, it broke. When it broke, me thinking it's over, you know the next one wasn't wooden, it was metal. So anyway, the point I want to make is... The more you try to avoid what would happen, the punishment only what? Increased. And وَلِلَّهِ مَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى Of course Allah is above any example. Anyone that tries to avoid his tests, anyone that tries to run away from his destiny, what will happen? It will only get worse for you, my brothers. Allah has put us on this earth to test us, my brothers, and Allah wants to test our hearts. Allah wants to test our actions. And Allah has placed calculated people with calculated problems at calculated times only for you. Because Allah wants to see what you will do. When will we start realizing that this man, this woman, this child, this uncle, this, the one that's driving me up the wall has been sent to me by Allah. When? And when will we start realizing that the way I deal with this person, 
Allah is watching and calculating. But unfortunately, my brothers, because Allah is completely out of the equation for us, how do we deal with each other? Tit for tat. We were in France once. We were in Jama'a. We were doing 40 days in France. So we had this black man, Christian man. can't remember what his name was. John or something. He came into the masjid. Very, very, very nice guy. Very, very God, yani God fearing. Uh, yani he was a man of morals and conduct, you know. Anyway, so he came into the masjid. He really loved the jama'ah. Was sitting, was socializing, was talking. And then by the end of it, he said to me, you know, brother, let me tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, man, you believe in God, then I believe in God. You believe in the day of resurrection, I believe in the day of resurrection. You believe in doing good, I believe in doing good. So tell me really ultimately, what's the difference? Aren't we both the same? I said to him, no, my friend, he is where you are completely wrong. He said to me, why is that? I said to him, I'll tell you why. When your neighbor is good to you, my friend, what are you in return? He said to me, I'm good in return. I said to him, what if your neighbor is not good to you? What do you do in return? He said, I don't talk to him. I said, that's where you and I, we take different paths. Because I'm good to my neighbor regardless how he treats me. I'm not good to him because he says hello. I'm not good to my neighbor because he smiles at me every morning. I'm not good to my neighbor because once a year he puts a box of mangoes on my door. I'm good to my neighbor because it's a divine order from Allah to be good to him regardless. He's nice, he's evil, he smiles, he curses, he harms me, he's Muslim, he's non-Muslim, he's irrelevant. I'm good to you for the sake of goodness, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't deal with each other tit for tat. I'm not nice to you simply because you're nice to me. He, this, is, this is the key note right there. Today, most of our relationship, most of our friends, we're friends because there's friends of benefits. Wallahi, friends of benefits, that's all it is. You look deep down, anyone outside a family, anyone that's outside a family, when you look at the people that you are friends with, to some extent, you're only friends with them because somewhere along the line, there's a benefit for you. You're extra nice to that millionaire. Even though you know, you and I can never be friends, but you're extra nice, you extra smile just for the thought that maybe one day, maybe, who knows, Allahu A'lam, but maybe one day I may need you. So let me build my relationship from now. And then when it comes to family, look, look, my brothers, let's be real. Look at our culture. Look at the way we live. Brother, let's go visit Fulan. He's sick. Let's go visit him. Uh, may this be the last sickness of his life. May Allah take him and, re and, 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 and really may Allah relieve the community of him. <laughs> why, my brother? Why? In the, why? La ilaha illallah. Why? What happened? Three times I visited him. Three times I visited him when he was sick. Last week I almost died. He never came to visit me. The hell with him. Why should I visit him for, bro? Be honest. Please, please be honest. Is this not how we deal with each other? You look at the people you invite to your weddings. Look, look, look at the way we deal with each other. And then we think it's Islam. Habibi, this has nothing to do with your deen. It's culture. We're Muslims by name. This Islam that we live is more dominated by culture and tradition. It has nothing to do with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't care how long your beard is. Look at, wallahi, more than half the people you invited to your wedding was because they invited your mom and dad. Or maybe there was going to be a good reward, you know. <laughs> you invite certain fulan, you know there's going to be good ones, you know. Let's invite this relative, you know, maybe a, a second cousin relative. No, 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 no. Three of your brothers got married, we invited them. Last year when their daughter got married, we didn't get an invitation. No more! Come on, be real! And our kids are watching. You know the son you have in Hafiz school? You know the one, mashallah, is going to be a Hafiz? Yeah, he's watching you, Habibi. 
This is the deen. And deep down we justify, no, my brother, no. I only stopped talking to them when they harmed us. This is, this is our communities now. Two brothers, imagine, two brothers. Two brothers. Born from the same womb. The same mother. Breastfed from the same breast, from the same chest. They ate from the same plate and they drank from the same cup. They slept in the same bed for years. Now they don't talk to each other. Because my wife, she doesn't get along with his wife. So this way it's just better. For a woman! A woman! You stop speaking to your brother because of her comfort? Sheikh, what do I do, man? We have kids. She, you know, she threatened me that if, you know, she'll leave and take them. Wallahi, I don't know what to do there. Wallahi, I don't know. Habib, the hell with her, the hell with the kids, and the hell with any individual that ever dares to stand between me and my brother, family! Family, you stop visiting your mom because your wife doesn't like her? Sheikh, she causes us trouble, man. <laughs> I spoke to the Sheikh and he said, yeah, you know. Mashaykh, ulama, ulama in the same community. Come on, come on, let's be real. Let's put the fingers where they hurt. Nice big bead. Nice big turban. Wallahi, I visited places. I visit places. They come to introduce me, you know. By Allah, I don't want to be there to begin with. Wallahi, Allah is my witness. I don't want to be there to begin with. But khalas, politics, and for the greater good, you know, uh, it kills me. You go there, uh, please, the elder of this. But uh, khalas, sunnah as well. And it's hard on my nafs. So you go there, Sheikh would like to introduce you, uh, brother would like to introduce you to, and the man will stand there. And for 15 minutes, they say their titles. Mufti, Saab, Maulana, the establishment, the CEO, the president, the Mabarif Shu, the one who started the, ta, 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 50, 15 minutes, ta, 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 and I'm being punished, ya Allah, just tell me his name. 15 minutes, ta, 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 this person, and he'll stand there, oh, no, brother, astaghfirullah, you know? but he's loving every single second of it. He's loving it, his heart is dancing. His heart is dancing! But you know, this masjid doesn't get along with that masjid. <laughs> I met two ulama, two ulama, both have big followings, big problems between the two. They're old. Guess when their problem originated from? By Allah, I'm in the house of Allah. Guess when their problems, deep down at the core, guess when the problems between these two people that went to the same school, studied under the same teacher, guess when their problem started? Over 35 years ago when they were studying alam. Deep. Very easy to grow your beard, my brother. Very easy to wear a thobe. But remember, there's two sides of worship to Allah. There's the limbs which are very easy. Come, come, come back home with me in Sydney. Wallahi, I'll show you drug dealers. The biggest drug dealers in our community, they're Muslims, they come to the masjid, they pray in the front row, his beard is bigger than your beard and he'll give you a fatwa for what he does too. 
But this is easy. But Allah is looking for what? For the ibadat of the heart. That listen, my brother, even if he's harmed you, you deal better than him. You do that. No, my brother, no. We live in a world that's tit for tat. He harmed me, I harm him back. Two people that get married, husband and wife. Imagine, husband and wife, they're married for years. Look, we never ever endorse and we never ever encourage divorce. We understand. But it happens. It's a reality. Sahaba got divorced. Rasulullah almost got divorced. So, you know, if the Sahaba did it really, who were we 1400 years later? The divorce itself is not my problem. What my real problem is, is the way we deal with it. When we got married, MashaAllah, Shaykh, we want the nikah to be in the masjid. Please. We want the barakah of Allah and His Prophet. We want, we want the barakah. So the nikah, inshallah, will take place in the masjid. And the mahar will be the Quran. Allah. Isn't this cute? The mahar is the Quran. Never mind that the wedding is going to cost him $150,000. No, no, that wasn't mentioned in the mahar. That wasn't mentioned in the mahar. Sheikh, uh, we want to marry your daughter. Yes, of course, Sheikh. Inshallah, what's the mahar? Uh, Sheikh, nahna, we're very simple people, you know. We do the same for her sister. What's her sister? $200,000 Australian. How much? <laughs> no, no, Sheikh. Urf, urf. Habibi, what urf is this? What earth is this? If your daughter married a millionaire, Habibi, I'm struggling to make ends meet. I'm struggling to make, but this is the same guy who'll pray in the front row and tell me, oh, mashallah, come and sing me songs. Wallahi, I don't, I don't have the time. So, you know, the dealings, dealings with each other, tit for tat, the two got married, we understand. Divorce happens, we understand it happens. But why the animosity? Why? Why the animosity? Why was it when we got married it had to be under, in the masjid, while the imam, under the sunnah and the blessings of Allah and all of this? Forgive me, because really that's how we... Nonsense! We don't really care. Why? When do the colors really come out? Ah, when we get divorced. Now it's what? The hell with your shaykh, Habibi. Now it's my lawyer versus your lawyer. Yeah. This is our deen now. This has become the norm in our communities now. Whatever happened to forgiveness, my brothers? Whatever happened to treating others better than they treat you? What happened with not looking at the individual, but rather seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from behind this person? What happened to that, man? When did our hearts become so hard, bro? When did we become so merciless? If we, the Muslims, amongst ourselves, no rahmah, no patience, no adab, no akhlaq, no tolerance, we want the world to love us. We want the world to accept Islam. We want the world to see Islam. Yet deep down in the core of our hearts, there's nothing but arrogance and pride. Animosity. One thing happens. Wallahi, one thing happens. Two brothers will not speak to each other for years. For years they will not. Not only that, the longer they don't speak, the more pride he takes. Ten years I haven't spoken to my brother. Yet ten years he's been a jahil, you ignorant person. And don't you dare... Don't you dare come and tell me, well, brother, I'm in the haq. Now when we come to deal with each other, two brothers, there's an issue, there's a dispute. Habibi Malish, you be the better man, you be the bigger person, you be the smart. just let it go. No, my brother, no. Doesn't Allah say in the Quran that a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye? Allahu Akbar. You see, when it comes to me, I'm the biggest alim in the world. But when it comes to others, I'm the biggest jahil. Have you noticed? 
Brother, doesn't Allah say in the Quran that a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye? Yes, Allah does say in the Quran. But finish that same verse off, my brother. The same verse, finish it off. Allah says, yes, a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye. But those that forgive, this is better for them. We don't want to forgive, my brothers. We don't want to forgive. We don't want to be the better person, deen. This culture we have created, this tit for tat culture, is nothing but jahl. It's nothing but arrogance. It's nothing but thug, thuggish, gangster mentality. Has nothing to do with Islam, has nothing to do with the Sahaba, has nothing to do with Rasulullah, and it sure as hell has nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can sing whatever song you want, you can sing whatever tune you want that makes you sleep better at night. Understand that that path that you're on, if you die on it, I swear by Allah, there's only one place you're going. It's called Jahannam. And if you're thinking, how can you say that? Trust me, wallahi, I'm coming with my dalil at the end. Trust me, I'm coming with it. Because to forgive is not something that, look, my brother, I forgave, so therefore I'm a good person. We don't ask for forgiveness because, you know what, you're a good man or you're a good woman. We ask for forgiveness because it's deen. Because those people with true iman, they forgive. And if you don't forgive, if your heart cannot forgive your brother and sister, you have a big problem with your aqidah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is deen. We don't speak about these topics to make you feel good. I didn't come from Sydney, Australia and leave my family behind and all my problems and my business so we can come here and wallah rub shoulders and give you nice words and make you feel good and you make me feel good. This is called wasting time. But change, real change. To forgive is a quality of Iman. And anything other than this is jahiliya. You see, my brothers, you know what I love about the Sahaba? Do you know what I love about the Sahaba? The Sahaba were real people. Real people. People who, because of their realness, because of their authenticity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa radu am. Allah became pleased with them. Allah praised them in the Quran, my brothers. Why? Why? Today, when we speak about Sahaba, we speak about them, we make them like they're angels, almost as if they're angelic. And I know we do this with a good intention, but the truth is, when you make Sahaba look like angels, you really, honestly, you take away from them, you actually don't increase for them. But they were real people, and they had real issues, they had real dramas. One of my favorite stories, when Abu Dhar, for those of you who don't know Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar is, he is such an Arab, Abu Dhar is such an Arab that he makes other Arabs feel like they're Ajamis. Arab, Arab with all Arab qualities. So one day the Sahaba that were sitting in a gathering, this was after one of the battles, and there was some booty of war, and the Sahaba were having a mashura. You know what that is, mashura? Anyone know what a mashura is? Because today we sit in circles, but they're not mashuras. We don't do mashura anymore. Because the usul of mashura, there's no mashura before mashura and no mashura. Yeah, but Habibi, we've done it before and it's after. And what happens in reality? That's fine, that's fine, it's fine. Leave it, leave it. It's okay. Today there's mashura before mashura and there's mashura after mashura. Wallahi, we come to the mashura with the sole intention. I just want to see what that one specific individual has to say. <laughs> uh, how the wrath of Allah hasn't fallen is beyond me. So Sahaba sit, time, time, I don't have time. Sahaba sit, and Abu Dhar gave his opinion as to what they should do. Guess who was next in line? Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Bilal, so you know, Bilal was not only a black man, and it's sad that 
these qualities still in our societies, still there. I drive around in South Africa and I see the way the Muslims, forget kuffar, the way the Muslims treat the black man, it makes me want to explode with rage and anger. If we were the men we had to be, half this country would be Muslim. But the truth is, we are the most racist, the most arrogant, the most, like, where, where, where do I, wallahi, I didn't come to use these words, I swear by Allah I didn't. These black men that work for you, I see, I see some of you are millionaires, millionaires. You're a millionaire off the backs of these people that gave you their lives and you pay them rubbish. You pay them rubbish! You holiday no less than five times a year. You drive cars they can only ever dream about and you give them rubbish. So Bilal was not only a black man, but used to be, before Islam, he used to be a third grade slave. Even slaves had levels, huh? Bilal was the lowest of the lowest. Then was freed by Abu Bakr, the Sayyid of all. Then became the Mu'addin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now sits in a circle where his opinion is heard. <laughs> so Bilal says, Abu Dhar, I disagree with your opinion. I think this is what we should do. So Bilal, so Abu Dhar anhu, when he hears this, he became so infuriated. And you might think, brother, why did this happen? I swear by Allah, there are masajid today. There are masajid that have been established because of a disagreement in Mashura. Houses of Allah have been established for no other reason than a problem we had while we were sitting in the masjid. So he says to him, Abu Dhar, who is this person? He says, even you, Ya Bilal, even you, you son of a black woman, even you are going to disagree with me. Big words, my brothers. Big words. Sahaba, Sahaba, real stories. Real problems. Bilal, when he heard this, imagine, imagine a man whom Muhammad loved, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Imagine a man who had the honor of calling the adhan in the masjid. You son of a black woman. Not, you know what? It, you know, it's one thing, and how many times, that, brother Wallah, if he insulted me in private, I wouldn't have reacted the way I reacted. But the fact that it was public, I had to do what I had to do, brother. So Bilal, ah, the pain. He left the gathering and he ran to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shattered, heartbroken. Now let me prove my theory that we don't follow the sunnah of Muhammad, we follow the sunnah of Michael. In this day and age, if you and I had a problem and I left to go complain to someone, what is this action called? Huh? Who's honest enough? Someone here. He's a snitch. That's right. He's a snitch. And you're being kind. I know you are. He's a snitch. That's not me, brother. I'm a man. I'm a real man. I will never lower myself to go complain to someone. No, of course not. You and I are jahil. This is what you and I will do. I'm a man. So what I will do is, for the next 20 years, I will backbite him and slander him with every opportunity I get. I will avoid him even if we're in the masjid. In the month of Ramadan, in the front row, I will avoid him. I will act like I didn't see him and he will act like he didn't see me. And any chance I get to make dua, the Ya Rab, let a bus, a train, a helicopter, a plane, anything of your creation, Ya Allah, let it hit him. 
Uh, this is how we deal with our problems. But God forbid, God forbid, we should go to someone that maybe can help our problems. Too much pride for this. So he goes to Rasulullah, he tells him about the incident. Ghadiba Rasulullah, the Prophet of Allah, became so angry. He came back out, sallallahu alayhi wa he goes to Abu Jahl. Look, look, look at the dealings. He grabs Abu Jahl, he says, Abu Jahl, you are a man that still has jahiliyyah in his heart. Now look at the way Abu Dhar deals with the situation. What did he do? If that was you and I, Kasma Sheikh, Eid al Quran, Wallahi, that's not what I said. That's not how I said it. Wallahi, he's a liar, he's a this, he's a that. Abu Jahl, sorry, Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Look, look. You know who's a real man? A real man is someone who acknowledges when he's wrong. Abu Dhar realizing he's in the wrong, he apologizes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he goes in quest of Bilal. He didn't leave the community, didn't leave the masjid, didn't go start his own masjid where he can do his own thing because he thinks he understands deen better than the black man. He goes in search of Bilal and then he finds Bilal in the streets of Medina. So he goes to Bilal, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he goes to him and he grabs Bilal and he gets down on the floor and he puts his head on the floor. And he says to Bilal, he says, Ya Bilal, I swear by Allah, I will not lift my head off the floor until you step on it with your foot. And let it be known, Bilal, let it be known here and now which one of us is the honored and which one of us is the dishonored one? What did Bilal do? An opportunity that most of us would love to have with the people that hurt us, my brothers. Yeah, yeah, little dog, I told you I was in the haqq and I told you I was in the right and this kasma Allah is showing you you're a jail. So Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he gets down on his hands and feet, you know, on his hands and knees, and he kisses Abu Dhar on his forehead. He says, Ya Abu Dhar, I forgive you for the sake of Allah. Done, finished, dusted, never to be spoken about ever again, Abu Dhar. Finished. We're brothers, man. This is deen. Deen that belongs to the history books. This is why radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa radu'an. This is why we're more than them in number. We have more knowledge than they ever had. Wallahi, some of our phones carry more alm than any single sahabi. We have all the books of fiqh and all the books of hadith and all the tafsir of Quran. Yet there's not an ounce of iman like they, they had. Forgiveness. To forgive, Allah says, forgive. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, he who does not have mercy to the ones on earth, the one in the heavens will not have mercy upon him. Forgive one another. Don't you want Allah to forgive your sins? The order of your Habib to forgive, to let go, stop hanging on. Let it go. Not me, bro. Not me. To deal with people better than they deal with you. Today, wallahi, if you were to try this today, your own father will tell you, son, are you not a man? At what point will you wake up and have some dignity and honor? Ten times you've been to his house, not once he's come to you. Wallahi, your own father will tell you this. Listen to the words of Allah in the Quran. You ready? To show you how much jahiliyyah we have. I hope the sisters are listening. I hope. Allah says in the Quran amazing, amazing words. Allah says, 
ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من ال Amazing. Allah says, and who is better in speech than the one that calls to Allah, like we all claim we do, of course, and does the good actions and says, I am from the, from who? From the, from the Muslims. Not from this madhab and that madhab. Not from this fikr and that fikr. Not from this jama'ah and that jama'ah. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ ال Muslimin. Then Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ Allah says, good and bad can never be equal. Uh, uh, the good deed and the bad deed can never be equal. ادفع بالتي هي أحسن. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to your Sahaba. Habibi, don't listen to your Prophet. But at least listen to Allah. Allah says, ادفع بالتي هي أحسن. Repel. The harm and the evil that is done to you with that which is not equal, not good, better, better, Dean, you want Jannah, you want Firdaus, better, you harm me, you curse me, better. I visit you a hundred times, you don't visit me, I still visit. Better! Watch, watch, watch. فَإِذَا الَّذِي You ready? فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةَ for if that person which between you and him or her is hate, you know what? It's not hatred. It's Adawa is enemy. Enemy. Allah says, enemy. Allah says, if you itfa' billati hiya ahsan. Allah says, if you do this, Allah says what? فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كأنه ولي حميم. كأنه he will become your closest ally, your closest friend if you do this. But the truth is we don't want to do this. Who put that person in your life, my brother? Who? If a leaf, a leaf, something as insignificant as a leaf on a tree, a leaf cannot fall off the branch except and only by the permission of Allah. Who do you think put that person in your masjid? Who? And then Allah says in the next verse, what does Allah say in the next verse? Wama? If you know what, say it out loud. وَمَا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا Again, you want Firdaus? Allah says, you will never dream. Don't ever dream. You will never see, you will never smell. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا 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 Except, except, except. الَّذِينَ What? صَبَرُوا My brother's killing me, man. But what do I do, my brother? Sabaru. Okay. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا And then? وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا 
to love and love him except those that are very fortunate. They're the ones up there. To forgive, my brothers, I know I'm running out of time. Wallahi, I'm wrapping up. To forgive, to let go, to have mercy and compassion, my brothers, to deal with people better than they deal with you. Deen. Deen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahih, sahih narration, sitting in the masjid, forgive me, I have to fly through this because I only have a few minutes left. Sitting in the masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and please, wallahi, give me your hearts. They're sitting in the gathering, and then the Prophet of Allah said, a man will walk into the masjid, I swear by Allah, he's from the people of paradise. Sahaba turned around expecting some big mama. His name was not even mentioned in the hadith. Three days in a row, and the Prophet of Allah said to the Sahaba sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a man will walk into the masjid, and I swear by Allah, he's from the people of Jannah. And for three days, the exact same man walked in. His name is not mentioned in the hadith. So one of the companions that was sitting there, his name was Abdullah ibn Amr. Anyone know this man? Abdullah ibn Amr? One of the greatest ubad of Allah, Abdullah ibn Amr. Abdullah is the son of Amr ibn al-As. The one that opened Egypt. One of the ten guaranteed paradise. In some narrations, this is very important. I'm not saying it for your entertainment. In some narrations, they say the gap between Amr ibn al-As and his son Abdullah was guess how much? Eleven years. Eleven years. Yeah, yeah, you heard right. That means that when Amr ibn al-As had his son Abdullah, he was how old? Eleven years old. Did the Prophet marry her at six? Yeah, Habibi, when the men are having boys at 11. Today, the brother's 40 and he's still not married. Ah, oh, brother, you know, I need to settle down. Hey, Habibi, take your time, huh? Take your time, yeah? 40 years old, he's still got a comb over and gel in his hair. Habibi, we're like, what? Well, I don't understand. We did that when we were 18. We, and where is he still going? Ah, oh, Sheikh, you know. <laughs> take your time, Habibi. Wallahi, take your time. Time is all yours, yeah? 11 years old, he had his son Abdullah. Abdullah, and this is, this is very important detail to appreciate the hadith. Abdullah was one of those people that worshipped Allah so much. His father, Amr ibn al-As, forced him to get married. Today our children are dying to get married and our parents are not allowing it. For I don't know what reason. His, his father begged him to get married. So on the night of his wedding, I swear by Allah, please, please, ya Allah, open, open hearts. On the night of his wedding, Abdullah, imagine a young boy in Medina, probably, very good chance, never seen a woman in his life. Everyone's in niqab. Yes, Habibi, niqab, the face covering. Not the one that the, the jilbab with her face is showing, and her eyelashes, mashallah, if she blinks them fast enough, she can fly with them, and her makeup, and my, no, no, Habibi, her face was covered completely. Imagine, probably never seen a woman. On his wedding night, on his wedding night, he came home, his wife was there, his bride, Sunnah. She was dressed, pampered, makeup. Habibi, it's her wedding night. He comes in, he's a virgin, she's a virgin, never before. So he walks in, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and there she was laying there on the bed. He walked in and he said to her, do you mind if I pray two rakat? Habibi, when I got married, I didn't pray for two weeks. <laughs> Never mind two rakat. He said to her, do you mind if I pray two rakat? So she's thinking, mashallah, I married a, I married a maulana. She says, yes, please. This was after Isha. So he prayed two rakat and two fajr. Wallahi, check the narration. And to Fajr, she fell asleep five times. Fajr came, she said, surely something's going to happen now. He said, I'm going to pray Fajr in the masjid, I'll be back. He went, he came back, she fixed herself up. He said, oh, my apologies, I'm fasting today. Wallah, wallah, wallah. For three days, he fasted the days and prayed the nights and she sat on the bed untouched. 
So after three days when Hamad ibn al-As came to check on his new daughter-in-law, he said to her, how's my son? She said to him, Wallahi, Habibi, you know him better than me. I've been sitting here for three days. He hasn't touched me. So he took his son to the Prophet of Allah and he said, you deal with this man. I can't talk to him anymore. He's driving me crazy. This Abdullah ibn Amr, he was sitting in that gathering when he heard that this man is from the people of Jannah and the Prophet of Allah didn't say. So anyway, he goes to the man, he cooks up a story. He says to him, look, I'm having some problem with my father. Can I stay at your house for three days? The sunnah, three days. So the man, of course, says to him, yes, yes, yes. Abdullah said, I went there with the sole intention of what? Watching him. What does this man do that so much? That's so better than I. He said, when we went there, you know, he said it was time for tahajjud, I watched him. He said he went to sleep, woke up just before Fajr. So what the hell, what's that? The man slept the night, I've been praying. He said we went, prayed Fajr, he came back, he said surely he's going to be fasting. He said we came back, the guy had breakfast, invited me for breakfast. He said for three days, for three days, no tahajjud and no fasting, nothing, nothing special from the man. He said he drove me crazy. After three days, he came to the man, he says to him, look, you know, he says to him, look, I have to be honest with you. I didn't have any problems with my father. But for three days, the Prophet of Allah said, you're from the people of paradise, and I wanted to know why. I wanted to know why. He said, I watched you for three days, man. And forgive me, brother, you don't do anything special, cuz. Nothing special about you. So the man says to him, Ya Abdullah, I am as you see. I am as you see. He says, isn't there anything you do? He says, La Allah, this is it, man. So he leaves. As he's walking away, the man remembers. He says to him, Abdullah, he says, what's that? He says, there is one thing. He runs back, he says, tell me. He says, there is one thing. He says, every single night when I put my head on the pillow, I forgive every single Muslim in my heart. And you can't forgive your blood brother. Your blood brother, you can't forgive him. Because when your dad died, some inheritance, money! Habibi, let him have it! Have you forgotten there's a day of judgment? Have you forgotten that there's an Allah that doesn't forget? Have you forgotten that there's a... Have it! I don't want to have it! But where are you going to go? فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Anyway, I promised you it has something to do with Iman. I'm finishing now. The Prophet of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Iman, Deen, Deen. The Prophet of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, every Thursday, your weekly actions are collected and they're risen up and they're presented before Allah. Every Thursday. And he used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I used to fast on Thursdays because I wanted that when my actions are presented before Allah, he sees that I'm fasting and maybe this is a means for Allah to forgive. Who sins? Who's, who's, who sins? The Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, so every single Thursday, our weekly actions are presented before Allah, and Allah can forgive whomever He wants. Illa, except. Except. Except who? Ya Rasulullah. Except those two Muslims who don't talk to each other. Regardless who's in the right and who's in the wrong. Allah does not even look at their deeds. So Habibi, you can build all the mosques in the world. And you can do Umrah 15 times a year. And cry in front of the black rock and on the door of the Kaaba. Understand this. Hajj year in and year out. Whatever you want. Everything you do. Equals to a big fat zero in the eyes of Allah. So long as you don't speak to your brother. Deen. You know why we don't forgive my brothers? One answer. Who's honest enough to tell me? Why don't we forgive? Who knows? What? Pride. Pride. Don't lie to yourself. Please, don't. Pride. Kibber. Do you know who I am? Do you know which family I belong to, bro? Do you know what nationality I am? Do you know how much money I have? Do you, do you, do, do you? Pride. 
Who's the only one that can have pride? Who? Allah. Allah. Who do you think you are, bro? Who? Your beginning was sperm. Your ending is a dead corpse. And everything in between, what? You were born naked. You die naked. Who on God's earth do you think you are? Who? Kibar! When the Prophet of Allah spoke about pride, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the only sin, the only sin that he ever mentioned, he says, anyone with an atom's weight, an atom's weight of pride, he didn't say an atom's weight of murder. He didn't say an atom's weight of, of, of rape or out. No. Anyone with an atom's weight of pride, never mind seeing Jannah, he will never smell its fragrance. And I will end with this, I promise you. Last question. I ask you something sincerely. The question is awkward and difficult. But my brother, are you bigger than Allah? Be careful of your answer. Be careful. Be very careful. Look at the confusion in some of your eyes. Because the program, the answer is what? Astaghfirullah, <laughs> brother. But your actions say what? Allah says, I forgive all sins. And you can't forgive your brother for one incident. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts and to unite us. نسأل الله عز وجل أن يغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء والأموات سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك